This video you're watching right now is brought to you by my ridiculously generous supporters of my Patreon. Thanks to their kindness, I'm able to do videos full time and bring you all this content that you get to watch for free. So be sure to give them a thank you as well. If you'd like to join them, head to patreon.com slash and choose a tier. Just five bucks gets you on the screen you're watching right now. And you can even help me get to the USA a little bit sooner, huh? You wanna see me at MFF, AC, BLFC? Hmm? Well, my Patreon helps me get there. So if you like what I do, give it a look for me. But for now, it's time for the video. Hello, welcome. Uh, I'm sorry, but before we begin, I would like to give a very, very quick shout out. I would like to raise some awareness for Golden Wolf Indiegogo for her Wuffies. A lot of you have probably seen Golden Wolf's art. She's been around for ages and ages and a reason that a lot of us are even furries. And she's got this adorable sticker series and character series called Wuffies. And she's looking to go the next step and make them into plushies. And just, just look at them. How, how would you not want a plushie of those? Sadly, the campaign hasn't been going too great. It's 64% funded and she was able to put another two weeks on top of it. But that's all we've got left. We've got two weeks to get $2,000 and then we can have these amazing plushies. So if you can, give it a look and give it some support. There's some really, really good packs there. And you can get some really cool stuff, shirts, mugs. Plushies, of course, so please check it out. I really, really, really want these Wuffies to be a thing. But yes, the bubble episode, getting started in art. Now, I am by no means a really professional artist. Like, here's what my art looks like. It's, it's all right, but I mainly just do art as a hobby. I've only been making money off my art the last couple of years, so uh, if you were looking for a video on how to be the next Falvey, um, sorry, that's not this video. <laughs> in fact, this video isn't really a tutorial at all. The point of this video is to like, just give you some pointers on how to get started, what's the right attitude to have, and I have actually gotten a lot of tips from some other artists I found on Twitter and things, which I am gonna pass down onto you. The biggest thing you should never do, especially when you're still learning, is compare your art to others. Of course, you are gonna feel bad if you're looking at all these amazing artists and then back to yours and being like, oh, why isn't my art like that? Like, but if you really wanna know why your art isn't like theirs, well, it's simple because that's their art. You wanna focus on your art. Because all those artists you're looking at, they didn't get to where they're at in a day, you know? They've been working hard, they've been practicing nearly every day and just lots of patience. Instead, look at them for inspiration, all right? Don't compare, comparing doesn't end well. When it comes to art, you want to think in three dimensions. You know, even if it's a flat cartoon, you still need to think of it in a 3D space. The way I do it is I draw a circle and then I draw some, you know, guidelines in that circle that helps kind of indicate which way the, the face is facing. And then I add a box for the snout. Then if I'm doing the body, I will draw one quick line that is sort of like the, the feel and the direction they're posed. Like this actually has a term, um, it's called a line of action and a lot of, you know, like, professional cartoonists and artists will use that technique, so do try that if it works for you. And then back to basic shapes to build the rest of the body. It's gonna take you a while to get a feel for proportions and sizes and things, but you'll get better at that over time. Then on top of all these basic shapes, you can start adding the proper outlines and adding all the details of the thing you're drawing. If you ever get stuck, then it's time to look at some references. So for example, if you're drawing, say, a dog, look up pictures of dogs. Like I myself will usually use references for hands, <laughs> That's where I always get stuck, so I'll look up, you know, pointing hand from the front, fist from the side. Like, get as little as you want when looking up these things, because you'd be surprised what comes up and what you can find. But remember to never, ever, ever trace or copy something exactly. If I could put your picture and your references side by side and pick them out quite clearly, then you've gone too far. If you're having trouble finding that balance, then either credit your sources or just don't post the art online, uh, otherwise you may find yourself being chased by a mob of angry fairies calling you an art thief. But yes, the point of a reference is not to copy it exactly, but to learn from it. So learn how it works, its proportions, you know, all the anatomy stuff, and then adapting it to your own style. Now I know you're not going to have a style if you're just starting, so again, credit your sources to be safe, but you will find it eventually. Now that is your building blocks, all right? From here, it is all up to you. You just need to keep drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing until you eventually, slowly, <laughs> get better. Think of it as every time you draw something, you get to add a block to your block tower. Sometimes it's really good and you get a nice big block, 
sometimes these things don't really work and it's just a little block. But either way, they're all blocks that contribute to getting your tower taller. And then with lots of time and lots of work, you add more and more blocks and then before you know it, your, your, your tower is a skyscraper. Persistence and attitude is key. You know, if you're always going, where my art sucks. I'm never gonna be good, all these other artists are amazing, oh my god, I hate my art so much. Then that's gonna end up becoming your reality, you know, you will never ever improve if your attitude is always bad. Because the truth is, pretty much every artist you'll come across isn't satisfied with where their skills are, even if, you know, you look at them and their, their style is just so perfect and amazing and you can't possibly imagine how on earth they could get better. They are always looking for ways to improve. Just like you, everyone is learning and every single drawing you do is another block on your tower. So keep your head up and look forward to the next drawing you're going to create. From here, I don't really feel qualified enough to give many more tips. Um, heck, I can't even do backgrounds. There you go, there's the example of bad attitude. Uh, I am still learning to do backgrounds. So to help you all out some more, uh, I made a post on Twitter and my personal Facebook asking artists to give you guys some tips and tricks and advice and the response I got was absolutely overwhelming like I woke up this morning and my Twitter said 99 plus I don't think I've ever had it like that before <laughs> so sadly I can't squeeze them all into this video but I'm gonna read my favorites out to you and then if you would like to read the rest I have linked the thread in the description of this video and people are still adding to it so go check it out after this video don't overthink small mistakes and practice 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 art takes time and work I'm still not satisfied with my work but I'm confident in the fact that one day I will be and I see this by comparing old art to new art. You don't notice the progression, but it's there. From Caitlin Stubbs. Most artists feel their work is bad. It's come to be known as the artist curse by some even. Use this to fuel your inspiration to improve rather than an excuse to give up and quit. The more you draw, the sooner you'll improve. You don't get better if you don't do anything. From Falsy. Make sure to show your art to others, whether it's in person or online, regardless of whether or not you think it's worth sharing. Not only can they give you good advice and critique, but others are much more likely to see the good points and improvement that you can't slash may not see yourself. From Dark Draws. When starting out as an artist, don't invest in expensive equipment before you can use it to its full potential. If you're barely able to draw heads and bodies, and Cintiq isn't going to improve your art style. It's best to start with pencil and paper to learn the basics, then work your way up to a Wacom bamboo, then invest from there after you've learnt the basics. Also, don't give up. The key difference between an amateur artist and a master is that the master has failed more times than the amateur has tried. We use our failures as learning experiences to develop and grow, not as reminders of our ineptitude. It's okay to not know everything at the start. What matters is your determination. From Skyder. I started in the fandom without any digital art experience. I dropped to 50 traditional requests until I started charging and continue to improve through every drawing. From Rio. References. You want to draw anything and aren't quite sure where to begin? Look it up. Animals, poses, clothes, features, anything. It really helps to find a starting point and get an idea on how things work. And it's so much fun to form your own style from it. From Vixen Dunk. Drawing humans for practice also helps with anthro art. When drawing human proportions, there's little room for error as the muscles and limbs aren't covered by fur. The better you get with human anatomy, the better your anthros will look. You can make perfect circles with traditional art using little household things like bubble caps, Pringle lids, and soda can bottoms. Rulers are also your friend, though the hard edge of anything straight will work. These rules also apply to tablets. From N Black Vixen. My advice comes from a meme. <laughs> Might sound silly, but I wasted a lot of time saying I should do something instead of actually doing it, even if it's terrible. Gotta suck at something before you get good at something. From Buff the Boo, and uh, this is the meme he was talking about. Just do it! Don't be a perfectionist when you're starting out. It's okay if it doesn't look exactly like how you thought it would. Move on to the next drawing. Taking little steps is way better than not moving at all. From the Nyaror. Inspiration and motivation is fleeting, so don't count on it. If you only work on projects when you have inspiration, you won't be doing much. You gotta practice and plow right on through, even when you don't want to, or your improvement will be very slow going. From Gator Guts. Start by drawing realism and then move into cartoons from there. Cartoons are just simplified versions of realistic work, so once you're able to learn anatomy, it'll be a lot easier to translate that into simple yet accurate style of artwork. When drawing realistic works, what helps me is to look at it just like a ton of lines, get every preconceived idea of what it should look like, and only draw exactly what you see. If you're having trouble, flip your photographic reference upside down and this may help you look at it from a non-objective angle. From Lesbian Dogs. If you're in an art block, doodle and don't care about how it looks. Just draw it, don't erase, forget about proportions, forget about style, just doodle it. Whatever comes to mind or whatever happens. From Merkowski. It's 100% about practice and patience. 
which I know isn't the answer anyone wants to hear. I certainly roll my eyes every time I heard that same piece of advice, but there's a reason for it. It works. It's all about muscle memory. Here's the difference four years of practice can make from Blondie Mutt. Even if you think you're too old to start, it's never too late. I know it can be crazy seeing 13 to 15 year olds making masterpieces, but never compare your art to others. Instead, use them as inspiration and find your own style over time. It may take a while, but you'll find it from Cross the Wolf. Draw every day. Keep a small sketchbook ready by you and draw in it daily. Push yourself to draw things that intimidate you and you'll be surprised by yourself. Don't draw just one particular thing, draw everything. From Dubmut. Expensive art supplies don't make the artist. Even though a lot of people use polychromos, colored pencils, it doesn't mean you have to get those. You can end up getting them and not like it at all. From Broken Six Teal. I just like to add to that, uh, please go check out Draw with Jazza right here on YouTube. Um, He's got amazing content, and one series of videos he likes to do is he will draw and downgrade his equipment. Like, he'll use, you know, the cheapest drawing tablet he can find, or like some free colouring pencils, or even crayons, just to show that the tools don't make the artist. So, I hope this has helped you to get motivated to get started in art and give you a better idea on how to go about it and the right attitude to have. So, time to get started, you know, let's look up some references, uh, look up some tutorials, you would be surprised what there are tutorials for out there. I actually started my art doing tutorials, like I googled wolf head tutorial and that's how I got going. So look up tutorials, tutorials are good. Then yeah, have some fun, try something new and who knows, you may just find a new career for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Now get out there and draw some cool stuff. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.